I'm Gold Derby News and Features Editor Ray Richmond, and I'm welcoming four-time Oscar winner Richard King, sound designer and supervising sound editor on the Universal biopic Oppenheimer from director Christopher Nolan to our film sound Meet the Experts panel. Richard, let's start off by discussing your prep for designing and editing the sound on a project the scale of Oppenheimer. How much did you study up on Robert Oppenheimer and the Manhattan Project? Well, I read the script very early on, and I immediately read the book American Prometheus, upon which the the book is based, uh, the screenplay is based, and um, and then uh, and then commenced to read everything that I could find on Oppenheimer and the Manhattan Project. Um, uh, I, I don't I don't I don't think it's uh, um, you know Chris didn't set up to make a documentary, but I don't think it's a bad thing to have some command of the facts when you're when you're uh, working on a, a a project about real events and real people um and uh and there's just a, a wealth of detail and interesting um uh sort of side stories that chris has included in the screenplay that are actually are very factual chris didn't combine any characters he didn't uh he didn't uh make up any characters no uh, composites every every everyone in the uh everyone every character in the film uh it was was there um and he you know he 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 pulls basically the uh the, the rock stars of the of this physics world uh into the film um uh it's a fascinating subject fascinating period and uh i think some of the um the most uh useful um, uh ideas for me came from uh first hand accounts of things that people saw and heard and um, specifically the Trinity test, which is the, 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 the high point of the, uh, of the, of the second act, I guess you'd say. Absolutely. Um, and uh, the, uh, the spectator, the scientists were all interviewed within a day or two of the event to get their immediate gut reactions. And they all mentioned of course, the the bright white light and the colors and the the the, the spectacle, the awesome spectacle of this, um, you know, what they were seeing. But they also mentioned sound in very interesting ways, and not in necessarily in ways that you would you would expect. That um, they, they always they 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 used phrases like uh, um, it sounded like a freight train passing, or or it sounded like um, some sort of weird thunder, man-made thunder, not natural thunder. They just kept going on and on and on and on. And clearly, even to the military men who were obviously familiar with the sounds of explosives, uh, there was something unique and, and odd about the sound. Um, I also just became very interested in the subject and kind of went down the rabbit hole of, of uh, a little bit of quantum physics and understanding as as much of that as I was, uh, you know, as much as I'm capable of absorbing. Um, uh, and yeah, I found all that very useful just in, in, in um, both in trying to create sounds for what Robert is describing when he's uh, either describing quantum particles or black holes or when he's, um, early in the film and he's imagining um, the quantum world and the world, real world around him that he can feel and touch starts to kind of disappear and he kind of loses his bearings and, and um, becomes so uh, uh, involved in, in imagining this quantum world that the things around him sort of start to disappear and he loses touch with reality a little bit. Um, I wanted to create some sense of what that must you know what, what he's imagining, and what he's imagining is is the incredible uh, latent power in these quantum particles, um, and uh, and which is you know ultimately unleashed when they when they detonate the bomb. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and also the, into Robert's head a little bit, and to try to he was a very enigmatic man even to his friends and he remains I, I what i love about the film is that chris doesn't attempt to to explain him you don't end up knowing him or understanding That's right him. he remains an enigma and, and a lot of his decisions remain um you know um 
uh, unexplained. And 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 uh, but there are times in the film when Chris gives you glimpses into his head, into the confusion, or into the 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 the, the battle of of uh, of ideas and morals that he's going through, uh, knowing full well what the result of his of this big science experiment is going to be, but also uh, um, wanting to finish it, being desperate to finish it. I mean, this was one of the first times in history where a bunch of scientists were basically given billions of dollars to perform this experiment, and that's how they looked at it. And um, so it was like it was like the lunatics were able to run the asylum for a while and 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 do something that. Um, without all this uh, money and government backing wouldn't have been able to be accomplished and um, <clears throat> uh, science from a scientific point of view now what they were uh, what they were ignoring to a great extent in order to get this job done was the was the practical effect of their work and uh, that is um, uh, th that is uh, something they all ultimately had to deal with after the bomb was dropped and that so I wanted to kind of understand what, you know, what what Oppenheimer's um, uh, what he really thought deep down, as much as as much as is possible to know uh, right. uh, about this, so that I could kind of try to describe sonically some of those um, subjective moments. When when we uh, when we see the Trinity test, one of the things that really stuck out for me, um, Richard, was we hear the sounds of breathing in quotes, human sounds, and it, 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 it's it's almost surreal. Can you talk about your approach to that? Just before the shock wave hits, we hear these extraneous sounds. Yeah, Chris very much designed that that pause into the um, into the the edit. Um, uh, first of all, just being true to physics, the fact that the the bunker's ten miles away, so it takes quite a while for the the shock wave and the sound to reach them. But also, it's it's in movies counterintuitive because you expect to hear the big bang when you see the big light. So uh, it it kind of gives the audience pause for one thing to um, um, appreciate the spectacle of what they're seeing, and also to see the the the, the uh, appreciate the stunned reaction of the of the the witnesses and. Um, their kind of disbelief that uh, the thing worked and they didn't blow up the world and um, uh, and it also and and this sort of the, the shock wave the sound is sort of the conclusion of that of that moment it's sort of the there they can finally breathe they can finally um, you know it, it it it's over the the event's over and the, the shock wave is sort of like the the closing of the door of the uh, of the event. Your design of the sound is so essential to the wrapping up wrapping up of tension leading to the Trinity test too, Richard. Like keys turning that set the timer for ignition and the buzzing of the countdown clock. What was your goal in creating what we hear in those weed up moments? Well, to represent reality it 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 is basically the sequence of events that they went through um to detonate the bomb um uh and uh but it was also quite a kind of a rube goldberg uh deal they're you know they're i, I love that the the shot where they're 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 rolling their rolled up uh mattresses underneath the 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 gadget as they're hoisting it up just in case the cable should break it it's going to land on these mattresses uh they they tape up the electrical outlets uh, on on the side of it and uh, it, everything's just got to kind of have this slapdash um you know uh we're we're piecing this together at the last minute they were working 24 hours a day to get this thing ready and um uh uh you know, each each device to get started uh, kind of heightened the tension. You know, he we walk into the bunker, they power up the racks of gear uh, and test equipment, um, and um, the timer starts, the cameras start rolling, uh, everything just sort of amps up to the um, you know the anticipation of uh, of uh, the 
moment when that automatic timer clicks, the solenoid clicks, and um, and the trigger happens. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the it's it's kind of the first that first part of the film, the first six reels or so of the film, leading up to the test, is sort of like the the thriller section of the film, um, and that obviously the detonation is the culmination of that you know that that thriller section. This was your seventh film with with Chris Nolan, uh, where you've worked the sound. How would you describe the experience of working with him, Richard? I think it's my eighth, actually. Eighth, uh, okay. I believe. Um, uh, well, uh, it, I, I love working with Chris. He's he's. It, it, it's always a challenge, and uh, uh, I always learn a lot. Um, we developed a, a method whereby he'll usually give me some um, some specific uh, uh, part of the film to start thinking about, or some specific type of sound to start thinking about. And in this case, it was the, the quantum particle sections uh, and there's more subjective uh, sections of the film. Um, uh, and we don't do any kind of spotting session. I just start working and send him uh, mixed down. So section scenes uh, of the film. Um, get feedback and in that way we, we kind of build upon uh, a shared reality which is a sound it's very hard to talk about sound it's very you know it's very abstract and and it's, it's hard to talk about it in in um in kind of terms without having something to refer to so uh we i we found that uh that working this way is uh is more efficient it also gives me uh an opportunity which i very much appreciate to have a first crack at it to to introduce my ideas without any filter or without any you know um shading or coloring uh, I, I, I think chris wants to get uh you know he wants everyone to bring their best to the table he doesn't want to have to tell everyone what to do uh and he um uh so it's it's i very much appreciate that opportunity to kind of be a beginner and be like just do what I think is good, and then you know, and then we we uh, we um, I get his feedback and we modify, and it's it's a collaborative process all the way through. We're going to wrap things there, uh, Richard King. Good luck to you this coming awards season. Oppenheimer, starring Killian Murphy, is available on multiple streaming platforms and on 4K Blu-ray DVD. Uh, thanks for joining us today at Gold Derby. Thank you, Ray.